Thank you very much. I thought that was a most interesting presentation, particularly the enormous diversity of range of price paid 50% difference. Um, that is surprising. I, I want to dispute the contention that when quotas go, it will be the poorer yielding countries who will lose their crop. In the UK, we do not consider ourselves a poor yielding country. But what has happened is that we have had, if we were a swimmer, we have had our head pushed under the water because we have followed the signals from the EU in the past and we have closed factories. We would very much like to take advantage of the, the um, abandonment of quotas, but we can't respond to this overnight. It's going to take us a few years to rebuild factories and capacity. And we feel that we are being treated really very unfairly in having obeyed the signals, done the right thing, closed factories, lost jobs. If these quotas are removed immediately, we are going to suffer. I was interested to hear that the, the consumers are desperate for supplies. And if you look at what's going on at Tate and Lyle refinery in London at the moment, you never would have thought that because they are going to have to close and you would have thought that if there was a huge demand for sugar, a sugar refinery would be making hay, so to speak. And we've got a problem here that Tate and Lyle need to import raw sugar and they're being prevented from doing this purely by EU policy. We must allow Tate and Lyle to be able to get the sugar that it needs to supply the British market to keep the jobs going. Thank you. We, uh... Yes, I would also like to thank the two speakers. Uh, the debate does come at a quite uh, curious time, and it's quite interesting to see the debate uh, coming on board uh, where some, at a time where some MEPs of this parliament have called upon the Commission to um, answer uh, some of the questions on the management of the sugar uh, CMO. Let me give you some figures, uh, just generally sp speaking, from two, 2006 to 10. Um, eight, more than 89 um, have, uh, refineries have uh, closed down. 140,000 uh, farmers have uh, stopped uh, beet farming. I think you need to look at these figures because they reflect the reality of what the 2006 reform was, and this was a reform that was accepted by the sugar profession. In that time, uh, you should also recall that in June, the European Parliament uh, voted, uh, and I would recall this because it's important, uh, we said uh, that we approve uh, the extension of uh, the 2006 uh, sugar uh, CMO until 2020, and uh, specific measures uh, should be taken to protect uh, sugar protection production in Europe uh, and allow the EU to improve its competitiveness in a stable framework that was voted in June 2011 in this parliament. Parliament. Now we're given all kinds of uh, scenarios uh, that um, turn all of this on its head. Why are we having this discussion? Uh, I'd like to thank Mr. Agnew for giving us part of the response of Mr. Agnew, and I think he's surprised uh, that I'm quoting him. What we find ourselves uh, today is that there is a uh, demand of certain uh, refineries who have over-invested and who want third country sugar imports, uh, uh, maybe not LCP uh, countries, um, but uh, LDP countries, uh, but third countries. Uh, um, and there were eight MEPs uh, that had uh, a request uh, to support an American company, American Sugar. They have uh, the Tate and Lyle um, refinery that Mr. Um, Agnew talked about just a moment ago. 
So there's a very clear resolve uh, from some in industry, more specifically that company, to um, have a, an explosion of the imports uh, because they have uh, a situation of undercapacity, and that undercapacity was financed uh, by um, the uh, European Union. Uh, so. We need to make sure that the industry is viable and that we need to have a, a tranquil environment until 2020 rather than creating problems for them.